I want to tell you about my new book called simply Monkey. It's one of the volumes in an animal series by Reaction Books uh, and each of these volumes takes a close look at one particular well-known kind of animal. Not just its biology and its uh, natural history, its uh, conservation, but also its uh, folklore, its history, its prehistory, um, the way it's portrayed in art and literature. In other words, a completely rounded picture of one of the well-known kinds of animals. Now, I chose monkeys because they're our closest relatives uh, and therefore they share a lot with us and that makes them interesting. In particular, they have a high level of curiosity, inquisitiveness, as we do. On one occasion, that uh, led to a rather embarrassing moment for me because I had to go into a shop and say to the startled young woman behind the counter, uh, excuse me, but some monkeys have just bitten off my nipples. Can you help me? And uh, I should explain that what had happened was that I'd been in one of those safari parks where you drive through an animal enclosure. And in the monkey enclosure, if you stop your car to take a photograph, all the monkeys leap on your car and start trying to attack it. Now, they can't do anything with the metal. But just at the bottom of the windscreen, there are two rubber nipples which direct the water when you're washing your windscreen. And uh, uh, those rubber nipples, of course, they can get their teeth into it and they love tearing them off. Now, those monkeys know that those rubber nipples are not edible. They're not looking for food. They are simply being mischievous. Uh, when children are mischievous, we call them little monkeys, and monkeys behave like that. They cannot stop investigating and exploring everything in their environment. And when a car comes into their enclosure, it gives them a novel moment, a moment of uh, novelty to explore. And there they are, ripping off anything they can from a motor car. A lot of people have this trouble at those safari parks. Now, this is a reflection of one of the three special qualities of monkeys. It's their intelligence, it's their big brains. They have very, very good brains, as, of course, we do. And uh, that's one of their great features, the thing that enables them to survive. They have two other special qualities. One is their hands. Like us, they have nails, sensitive nails, instead of claws, and opposable thumbs so that they can hold things. They can hold branches, they can hold food, they can pick berries and nuts and fruits in the treetops. And those qualities are very important because monkeys are treetop dwellers. That's where they live. That's where you really want to see them. Not sad creatures sitting in a zoo cage. You want to see them up in the treetops. And that's where they become monkeys. Uh, and they have a third quality. And that is that the eyes, which in most mammals who are here at the side of the head, have come round to the front like ours, and they have 3D vision. So that when they're leaping through the branches, they can be extremely accurate with their jumps. And uh, they are, of course, protected by this behavior because up in the top of the trees, predators can't get at them. Occasionally a big eagle might take one or a giant uh, python might crawl up and get one, but it's very rare. They're pretty safe up there and that's the secret of their success. It's meant that monkeys are now living in, in the forests in the warm parts of the world, uh, in Africa, in Asia, uh, and in South and Central America. There are about 173 species. I say about because, believe it or not, in the last few years, a new species of monkey has been found. In fact, several new species. Uh, they, they tuck themselves away in a quiet corner of a forest somewhere and, and just get overlooked. And so explorers are now finding new species of monkeys, even in the 21st century. So around about 175, 73, that sort of number. Quite a lot of them. And... Most of them live in the trees, but a few of them have got big enough and strong enough and brave enough to come down onto the ground. I'm thinking of things like baboons and mandrills. Uh, a baboon is a, is a big, strong animal with huge canines. I was on safari once in Africa with my family, and we were in one of those vehicles that has a lid that goes up so you can look out at, through binoculars, and the lid was up on top of the <laughs> kind of huge baboon. Uh, spotted that my wife and my small son were eating sandwiches. So it just came in from through, it leapt on the car, came in and took the sandwiches. Um, there's only one thing you can say 
to an animal that has a canine tooth that big, that close to your face, and that's have another sandwich. Uh, it's, it's not an argument you want to start with an animal like that. Uh, you, you just let it do it, and it took, it took the sandwiches, took everything, all the food, and just left. They are fearsome creatures, and what's more, if a leopard tries to attack, then all the male baboons will gang up on him, and you get a group of those males with those big canines. Uh, they can see off a leopard, and sometimes they'll chase a leopard for a long distance to uh, get rid of it. Uh, they're really fierce creatures, and, and they are typical of the ground-dwelling monkeys. There's one exception, and that's the patas monkey, which is an athlete. This is the fastest monkey in the world. It can, it can travel across the ground at 34 miles an hour and escape from almost any predator. It's tall, very thin, and it's the only sort of skinny ground-living monkey. So those are the uh, monkey species, and um, one of the questions I often get asked is, which is the most intelligent of the monkeys? Uh, the answer is simple. It's the capuchin monkey, a little monkey that lives in the forests of uh, South and Central America. An extraordinary little creature, and its use of tools is better, if anything, than, than that of the chimpanzee. I'll give you one example. There's a film of this little capuchin, and it's found a very hard nut, and it tries to bite it, and it can't. Now, most monkeys would just throw it away and go on and look for something else, but not a capuchin. What it did, it looked for a log, a fallen tree, and a particular kind of log, a log which had a little dip in it, and it put the nut in that little dip so that it wouldn't roll off the log. Then it went off, and it found a large, smooth pebble, uh, and it brought it back, and it lifted it up, it could only just about lift it up, and it smashed it down on the nut to crack it. And this is, it requires a remarkable level of intelligence and um, also persistence, because it had to do this 19 times before it managed to crack the nut open. This is a remarkable level of intelligence, and it's not surprising that when a monkey appears in a movie, it's nearly always a captain because they are the most intelligent. Uh, in, what's that film? Pirates of the Caribbean. Captain Barbosa, instead of having a parrot on his shoulder, he has a capuchin monkey. And uh, the actor, uh, Jeffrey Rush, who played the part, said the monkey was the brightest person on the set. He was so impressed by the intelligence of this little monkey. Um, and so, there you are. The monkey is intelligent, it's athletic, and it's got the secret of living in treetops to help it survive. Uh, there's just one last thing I want to mention, and that is that you all know about the three wise monkeys. That's the uh, uh, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Now, I was in the Far East recently, and I discovered that there are now four, not three, four wise monkeys. And the fourth one is called do no evil. And what its hands are covering is something, well, if you want to know, you'll have to look at page 36 of my little book called Monkey.